Okay, all right, folks. Welcome to the webinar. Welcome to the webinar. If you haven't uh, seen uh, the, uh, if you haven't seen this video uh, that I've just posted here on the chat box, you can go ahead and uh, watch it. Uh, what we are looking at here is how to trade the SPX intraday. One of the things uh, with the SPX as opposed to stocks is there is a lot of internal information. So you might have heard of the vol SPD, which is the up volume minus down volume. You, might, you would have heard of the advanced decline. You would have heard of the tick. So in this particular case, what we are using is the ticks. So the ticks, so if you, if you saw the regular day trading signals and you've seen this before, uh, it would be, uh, you know, this is a, uh, the day trading column, of course, it gives you the signal as to which stocks are uh, behaving bullishly. But the day, this column also gives you a snapshot um, about uh, the, um, you know, uh, it gives you a snapshot about the breadth of the market. So the breadth of the market is, uh, let's say we are looking at the S&P 500. Uh, out of the S&P 500, uh, how many stocks are bullish, how many stocks are bearish. And so that gives you an indication of the breadth of the market. And so the breadth of the market is extremely important because ultimately it's the individual stocks that actually drive the index itself. So if 400 out of the 500 are going to be bullish, then that is going to get reflected into the index. And so the index goes up. So it's weird how the index works because in the pre-market there is no, you know, the stocks are not trading or, you know, all this uh, volume up, up volume and minus y, uh, down volume. These are not being calculated uh, in the pre-market. However, uh, once the market starts, then all this calculation drives the SPX. So in the pre-market, it's, it's all just sentiment, maybe European market performance or Asian market performance. Uh, any of uh, uh, those kinds of issues drive the futures. But once the US markets open, it's the actual component of the S&P 500 that drives the S&P 500. And so um, there is several internals available. And one of the things, ball SPD is also a good one. However, if you look at the ticks, this is real time. Every time a stock ticks up or down, it goes into the tick value. So there is nothing more fundamental or more, uh, uh, what it's the lowest denominator of, uh, of, the, of the market internal. And so it's important if, if you can harness the power uh, of, uh, you know, of the ticks, then, uh, you know, the, uh, we can have a very reliable trading system. So by definition, therefore, this indicator that we are going to see today, it does not work on stocks. It only works on the SPX. Uh, you could try to use the indicator and trade on stocks. However, on that particular day, that stock may not be correlating well with the, with the index, in which case uh, your trade could go wrong. Uh, in most cases, stocks do correlate with the, S uh, with the SPX. And so if you're taking one of the, uh, you know, uh, uh, well-correlated, uh, you know, high beta stocks, you're probably on the right side of the trade. However, uh, uh, what I'm saying is, if you want the perfect uh, signal uh, from using the takes, then you have to trade the SPX. Now, the trading the SPX has tremendous advantages over stocks uh, because one, the SPX is a cash traded index. So let's say, you know, if you had to get into a credit spread, you're, you know, you're, uh, you're worried about whether, uh, you know, you'll get assigned on, on, on that trade. No, there's no, there's no worry of, you know, assignment because uh, it's a cash settled index. The second advantage, obviously, now if you look at the SPX, um, we have uh, expiries pretty much, you know, every other day we have expiries. So this expiry that we are dealing with is, is tomorrow, Wednesday. And then we have a monthly on Thursday. Then we have the, uh, you know, the, the regular weeklies on Friday. And then we have one on Monday again. And then we have one on Wednesday. And then we have one on Friday. So and, oh, I'm sorry, this is the quarterly. So you'll see that. With the SPX, you have so many expiries and this gives you even more flexibility with your, uh, you know, with your trading. So the tick is a very uh, fundamental, uh, you know, uh, uh, kind of data uh, that, that we get from the, uh, you know, that we get from the market. And so to harness it would be, uh, would be very advantageous. And so that's what we have done. And I think you may have seen the video of the of yesterday's trading action. This is what I covered uh, in the video yesterday. Let's just go back uh, one more day and see what the you know what the trading day looked like. So this was the previous day, which would be last Friday. 
and so as you can see uh, at uh, at exactly um, 9:30 now you'll see 1900 i'm in india uh, uh, 7 pm here is 9:30 am in the us eastern time and so my 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 clock is uh, showing all indian times here now it, the market starts and then it takes a beating and immediately you can see that the ticks are going red and this is also going red so now depending on where you catch this i mean this was a big drop from 2894 down to uh, 2886 so the, a, a drop of about 8 points so let's say you got in somewhere in the lower end uh, and then you went into this trade you know, you're going to get chopped up a little bit but so what you want to do is wait for uh, you know the right kind of signal there uh, you might have made some money here i'm not saying uh, you know that you wouldn't have made it i think you would have made you know, we would have made some money but some of the other ones where you know you could have made money was uh, you know especially when you see these persistent dots over here once you see two dots persistent i think it's uh, you know you, you can take a trade and um, uh, you know and, and 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 just be ready that you know if if the uh, if if things change then uh, uh, you know we should get out okay now sometimes you'll be get out you know you'll be able to get out uh, nicely and sometimes you might give up some profit like in this case you might have given up some profit but regardless once again you're looking for a persistent trend and so here you have another persistent trend coming up over here granted this is hindsight so you know it's uh, it's going to be a little bit more challenging when you see it in real time but the moment you see two persistent dots and you also see the the custom rsi uh, also build in that's when you want to go for the trade now this is a custom indicator as well uh, the uh, the custom rsi usually when you look at the rsi you'll say that okay if it goes above the higher line then it is overbought or, or if you go below the lower line then it is uh, you know, oversold in this case that's not the case the more time re it remains above in the overbought that means you we need to stay in the trade you need to stay in the trade so this is a great example of when you would stay in the trade uh, especially even if you see some two three dots over here uh, you can see but the rsi is completely uh, you know above the 60 level and so you want to stay in the trade right there and so this keeps you in the trade for much longer and you would probably stay in the trade all the way towards the close and uh, you know perhaps uh, you know uh, get down uh, get out of it when you see these one or two dots and uh, or if this guy uh, the rsi slips below the 60 level so there is much more uh, customization involved in this uh, the settings are 60 40 on the rsi but we are using the rsi only as a confirmation indicator so uh, please keep that in mind the main indicator is obviously the tick spx and uh, this is a cumulative calculation of the tick so if you saw the video i've explained tick and tick is a very uh, you know it's a very noisy indicator i mean there's really nothing uh, you can infer from just from the ticks uh, perhaps uh, if the tick is persistent on one side yeah then it may make some sense but otherwise the tick per se uh, doesn't give meaningful information to the retail trader but when you aggregate the tick you know so every bar you're aggregating the trick uh, tick to what has happened before so that just that then builds the market breadth for you and, and so and as you go into the trading day uh, this breadth becomes very very important so and of course anything below the zero line on the tick you know you're seeing a negative sentiment in the market and anything above the zero line obviously it's uh, it's turning positive and so as you can see here uh, you know the rsi is clearly in the bullish range uh, so I, i'm not going to call these overbought and oversold they're actually bullish range and bearish range and that's really the way to uh, you know that's really uh, uh, the way to look at it now, because of the customization that's gone in uh, it's not telling us uh, whether it's overbought or oversold it's telling us it has entered into a bullish uh, uh, you know a time or it has entered into a bearish uh, time so this uh, actually adds as a uh, you know as a very good secondary indicator for the ticks itself so that's uh, that's how the ticks work uh, and so this day actually we didn't have very many good trading opportunities except for the end right here somewhere over here we could have caught the trade and you would have ridden a nice i would say close to a 10 point ride on the s p so uh, one of the things is uh, you know so, so you're gonna have to wait for this kind of an opportunity to come now granted you don't have to wait for you know exactly this kind of opportunity you don't know if it's going to be that kind of an opportunity but you can take smaller trades intraday and uh, you know go with that
Okay, so uh, but the important thing is, uh, you, you know, if it changes, then you, you know, it's it's much more preferable to get out of the trade and perhaps get back in, even if you made a mistake or got out too early. It's much better to do that rather than stay in the trade. But if if the trend is persistent, then I would say don't get shaken out by one little green dot. You like here, you can see one or one, two, three, four, five, and then there's one green dot here. I don't think we should get shaken out by that. Perhaps if the green dots persist, yeah, on this one is when uh, you know you would want to get out. Uh, you know, if, if, if you see uh, if you see the green dot appear again, uh, then perhaps the, the, uh, that's the time you get out. Also, you can do a visual look right here at the you know at the chart itself and and see whether things are bottoming out or whatever, and you know if, if it's likely to go up. So uh, you can uh, you can get out of the put trade right there. So that's where things stand. Um, let's give it. Uh, let's give it a couple of minutes. Meanwhile, what I can do? Uh, 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 let's open it up for questions. So, because does everybody understand the tick properly? If you have any questions, we have about uh, uh, two two and a half minutes before the markets open. So, before the webinar starts, if you have uh, some questions on that, then you know, uh, please feel free to uh, type it in, and I'll, uh, I'll I'll tackle those. But once we get into the webinar. Uh, I will be looking at the markets now. Obviously, one of the things with the ticks is it takes a couple of uh, ticks. Uh, it takes a couple of ticks, two or three ticks, before you start, uh, you know, uh, uh, recognizing the trend. Okay, so uh, that's one of the things you have to bear in mind. Unless there is a uh, you know clear sentiment, uh, you know, coming in uh, uh, into the you know in, in, into the market. Like today, there is. I mean, the futures are up 18 points, and so there is a clear bullish sentiment coming in over here. All right, questions. Is this a toss indicator? No, that it's not a toss indicator. I've, I've custom developed this. Uh, does this indicator will work on swing trading? It will, but I've not worked for, uh, no, no, it won't work for swing trading because this is a intraday indicator. I'm sorry, not for swing. Uh, it won't work for swing. Uh, is this available on TD Ameritrade? No, it's not. It's a, it's a proprietary indicator. Is this being recorded? Yes, uh, I'm recording the, I'm recording it and uh, you'll have to give a few, uh, Hours for it, so you know, basically, uh, uh, I would say a day because I run the I run the day trading signals webinar also, and uh, well, I can cancel the Camtasia, but it will still take me. I'll I'll, I'll get it out by uh, uh, by tonight uh, or by tomorrow morning uh, uh, US time. So, um, all right. So, how much account size is needed, Jen? Uh, Jen uh, see, account size. There's no minimum requirement, but as you know, in intraday trading you are subject to the pattern day trader rules and the pattern day trader rule says that uh, if you have an account size of less than $25,000 then you are limited to three day trades in a five day period okay in a five day period uh, so if you do a day trade on Monday if you do a day trade on Tuesday and you do a day trade on Wednesday you won't uh, uh, you won't be able to uh, day trade again until next Monday when one of the day trades will get released then on Tuesday the other day trade will get released and on Wednesday the other other day trade will get released but if you have an account that is more than $25,000 you are not limited to any of that you can do any number of day trades okay so that's what they, in, in a nutshell is what the um, the uh, the pattern day trader rules are uh, how do I get it I'll, 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 I'll be explaining that later um, the, can you trade the SPY as a surrogate? Absolutely, you can. Absolutely, you can. Does it work on the QQQ? Uh, it, uh, it, it, yeah, it could. It could. Uh, you know, uh, 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 the setting for tick SP is the SPX. You'll have to set the tick for the Nasdaq uh, uh, tick. Okay. All right. Anyway, markets have started. So let me go to the current uh, location here, and you'll start seeing ticks coming in over here. And uh, we'll uh, we'll see we'll, uh, we'll see how things go here. Okay, so as you can see, the opening tick is very high because uh, our futures are up 16 points right there, and so the opening tick starts here uh, very high. I'm going to zoom in a little so we can see everything clearly for the first few bars, uh, and let's just watch this and go with that. So when you see when you see a good tick. Uh, and you want to uh, you know take a trade on the SPX uh, you would want to come into the closest expiry because this is not a trade you're planning to take uh, uh, you know on the uh, this is not a trade you're planning to take overnight uh, okay very good question Vin uh, five minute chart or the one minute chart I'm going to zoom uh, I'm going to put the one minute chart so that we have a much better feedback loop here uh, you know in terms of the tick okay so and then I'll what I'll do is 
let's do this. So you can see the first tick is up on the one minute, but as you can see, the S&P is coming down. The S&P is coming down. Uh, the tick is high. Okay. So those are my swing trades that are getting executed. Uh, we, uh, we won't worry about that. Um, uh, the tick is uh, so now it depends on how the market does. Uh, it, the tick is starting at a high level because of the futures. Okay. So now we watch and see uh, how this tick performs. Uh, and now bear in mind, this is a one minute chart. And so things can change even quicker on the one minute chart. So you have to be a little more nimble. It's up to each person how you want to use it, whether it's we want to use it on a one minute or a five minute. Uh, I would say one minute is preferable because we have a much quicker feedback loop and uh, you know, uh, from the market as to uh, what the internals are looking at. So if you go to see our day trading market watch here, You'll see uh, quite a few in the very bullish, just a couple in the very bearish. And that's what you would expect to see uh, in a futures environment like this. OK, so let's go back here and uh, let's just wait for a couple. And you can see now the ticks are increasing, even though the market is going down. That's because it's all coming from the momentum of the futures. Uh, so stocks are still ticking up, uh, even though the S&P actually gave up about four or five points uh, after the open. So let's give it a couple of more ticks, uh, I mean, a couple of more bars and let's see how the one minute chart is working. So you can see the RSI, which gives you the price trend. It's already telling you, hey, this is in bearish mode, just given this kind of a price action here. However, uh, you know, this is the market open. So whenever the market opens, uh, a lot of uh, pent up information is coming into the market. And so you don't want to take a decision right there uh, as to which way this thing might head. Now you can see the RSI starting to turn a, a, a turnaround. You want to take a trade when the RSI as well as the ticks are synced up. Okay, are synced up. So here we go. Uh, S&P is looking like it wants to turn around and go back up. Let's see what the RSI does on this tick. If the RSI clearly goes above, uh, then we may want to take a small trade. So uh, let's uh, let's just watch and wait because uh, certainly it's looking like a bullish market here. All right, so RSI, you can see as soon as the RSI crosses, uh, there's, a, there's an arrow that comes up and tells you, hey, it's crossed the uh, bearish uh, line and uh, now it's heading up, okay? Now it's heading up. Let's give, uh, let's give another uh, few seconds here. We got uh, 15 seconds on this bar. Let's see how this one performs. And I think it may be time for a bearish trade. The ticks are moving up. Uh, you know, you can see the ticks are 300 above. So which means, uh, you know, cumulatively, this is uh, uh, 300 stocks are uh, ticking up. OK, but 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 the tick can be any amount. It, it's not uh, uh, limited to uh, it's not limited to what you call uh, the 500 stocks because each stock can tick many, many times in a minute. So uh, and all of those are uh, taken into consideration. OK, so here you see uh, the SMB pulling back a little bit. The ticks are still strong, which tells you that the breadth of the market is still very, very strong. The price action is a little soft, but uh, the tick action is very strong. So if we wanted to take a trade uh, somewhere here, let's say, uh, you know, 29.25, the S&P is at 29.08, right? So let's take 29.30, uh, just take a small trade uh, and uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm just, I'm just getting it ready here. We'll, uh, we'll put it and, and, uh, at the right time and see. Now you can see the S&P taking a pullback. Price action will be reflected on the RSI. Uh, the market breadth internal information will be reflected in the tick SPX. Okay, so that's what we are looking at here. Let's give it another. It's a little choppy, and oh, you know, you're, you're bound to see some choppiness when the markets open. So now you see the first red tick. So on this one, more stocks tick down than up. However, you can see that tick is coming back again uh, and and moving up. So we just want to wait for both the tick and the RSI to sink in before we, uh, you know, before we take a trade. So, and that could take uh, some time because I, you know, as I said, the tick starts only at 9.30 a.m. And so you want to wait for some time and you know, you might miss a trade there, that's okay. Uh, if you use this system through the day, you're going to find plenty of trading opportunities on most days here. So uh, let's watch and uh, uh, let's see how this thing goes. All right, we are about five seconds away from this one also from this bar. And uh, let's see how the ticks go. All right, so the ticks are recalculating here. 
All right. No. So the tick is down on this. The tick was up on this, but it's down on this. Okay. So uh, once again, some choppiness here and the RSI price trend is turning down. So we just want to wait here because we know it's a bullish day. We don't have to wait for call trades only. However, given that the futures are 16 points up, you want to look for call trades only. Uh, when, it, when it's a down market, you want to look for put trades only. So, and sometimes it will be a flat market. You can't do much about that. You just uh, try to uh, take advantage of uh, swings in between uh, these signals here. So let's see how this one also goes. So, so far we don't have a clear trade entry signal yet. We are looking for bullish trades obviously because as you can see it's a strong tick. Uh, the cumulative is up uh, about 295. Uh, however, it has ticked red. Uh, which means uh, cumulatively uh, now uh, it is in the red, okay? But uh, it's not below zero. Remember that it's all positive. So once again, here we go. We are at 300 now. This was three, uh, 316 uh, and this is 300. So there's a slight down tick happening. So we've got to wait for one more bar to see if there's any clear direction. I would hesitate to take a put trade even if we see some more down ticks. I would hesitate to take a put trade because you're going against the grain. I mean, uh, it's a 16 point futures, you know, ES is up 16 points. And so uh, that's not the real environment to take a, a trade on the put side. So we will be looking for only call trades this morning. Yeah, RSI is moving up, but RSI reacts to, uh, uh, to the price action. It, you know, RSI is just strictly price action. It's moving up, but you can see it's in between this 40 and 60. So that is a time where you don't want the R, you don't want to depend too much on the RSI reading there. Uh, it, a clear trend would be when it's either above 60 or it's below 40 or it's heading there clearly. So now we have a tick that is nice. Okay, it's 400. All right, it's close to 400 at least. That is a good uptick, and so I would say. This is and we have two green ticks in a row and I would say this might be a good time to get in. Let's get in. Okay. All right. So 390 we are in on this trade 2930. Uh, 2930 is the uh, is the strike price and this is for tomorrow's expire. Okay. So we'll watch this. Let's uh, put the monitor here and I want to put the spy not the spider. These are swing trades and so I want to move it over to swing. No, these are not executed yet. Okay. SPX is our trade here. All right. So we are just mildly up on the SPX. Let's watch how the ticks play out. And this tick. All right. So this is this tick is uh, ticking down. Let's just watch this now. My God. We saw that move there. Look at that move. Look at that move. Look at that move. Unbelievable, unbelievable, unbelievable. Okay, so here we go. We have a profit of uh, 425 already on this trade on a five contract position 11, 1100. I'm taking it, I'm closing it. That kind of a profit you don't want to, uh, you don't want to mess around with. Yeah, 710. I'm closing that. Uh, some incredible volatility there. Uh, now it's come down to 6.15. Okay, let's uh, change the order. And uh, SPX, because uh, this is just incredible. 610, no. What would be the mid price here? Let's see. Uh, this is not where we are. Let's look at the monitor. We have, it's 590. Okay, so it just uh, came down two, three points right there. 585, even though it's a 975. Okay, so 585. So now it's 610. All right, 620. I'm taking it. I'm taking it. Okay, 620, 625, we should get executed. We should get executed. Let's see. It's actually gone to 6.7 here. Unbelievable. And up, and here Mark is saying 6.65. All right, there we go. Okay, it didn't give us a great price. It gave us at uh, 6, uh, 6 .2. That's, uh, and 6.2. And right now it's telling me the mark is 8.45. So, when things like this happen, even the market makers get completely frazzled. Okay, it, uh, you know they get completely frazzled when such when such things happen, and so that's why you see option prices just going, you know, crazy. Okay, 
So uh, uh, you see option prices going crazy. So that's why you saw these huge prices and things like that. So this was $1,150 profit right there. Uh, we could have done better. We could have done better. You can see now the mark price is 7.2. But of course, you know, uh, with day trading, things can change any minute. And so you want to take the profit and move on. Now, let's analyze the ticks. Now, look at this. We are in very bullish. Okay. We are in very bullish. Now, I wanted to take the trade. I wanted to take off the trade because this was a great uh, profit. And so when you have a great profit, you know, I, I, I want to take it off. But you can see now this tells you that, you know, this, you remain in this trade. You remain in this trade until uh, shown otherwise, until shown otherwise. Okay. So we actually left quite a bit of money on the table. We left almost a thousand dollars on the table because right now the mark price is uh, 7.9. But also, uh, this thing is uh, coming down a little bit, but the ticks are very strong. You can see the ticks are over 750 now, 811. You can see this number here, 811. Uh, the, and the RSI is in bullish mode. So the, this is a trade that you could have, uh, you could have just stayed in even now. You, you're, you're in this trade, okay? But I'm just doing it for demonstration purposes. So, uh, you know, and, uh, you know, I say, uh, if you have a good profit from a trade, take it. But uh, as you can see, you're still in this trade if you were, if you had gotten it. Okay. Yeah. Wow. That was an awesome move. I, I, I totally agree. I don't know if some news came out. I don't think so. It was just pent up, uh, you know, uh, demand there. But, you know, the ticks gave us an early uh, indication that, uh, uh, that it was going to go higher. So, you know, that's, uh, uh, that's what it is. Uh, do you always execute at market price instead of limit? I never execute at market price. I uh, execute only in uh, in limit price. Okay. Yeah. All right. Craig said made 218 real dollars using this. Thank you, Hari. I should have stayed in trade longer. Yeah. So if you look at this signal, then you want to trade. Uh, you want to stay in this trade longer because this is just you know it's telling you to stay in there until proven otherwise. Okay. So. Uh, now you can see it's uh, the mark price is nine. So you can see how these, uh, you know, and I, I exited at uh, what? 6.2. So, uh, you know, I've left two uh, two thousand dollars on the table right here. Anyway, so that was just a first demonstration. So that's OK. But normally when we would take this trade, you would remain in this trade because both these indicators are telling us that you got to stay in this trade. OK. All right, some softness coming, but let's see the uh, let's see the tick. Yeah, there will be another trade. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, I, I'm not going to do it on the spy, but it's the same trade. You can do it on the spy. Uh, the, it's the same thing. So now you see a red uh, red dot here, uh, and uh, you can see from from the 900 level, it's come down to 823 based on this particular bar's price uh, price action. So now, once a certain time has gone after the open the ticks are going to respond to each bar whatever happens on that bar okay because the there is a pent up action that is that happens in the first few bars when i say few bars i'm looking at the one minute uh, chart so uh, in the first few bars the pent up action may drive the ticks in one direction even though the price action may not show so in fact uh, if you look at our first uh, two bars they were down but our ticks are showing up so whenever the markets open there is that pent up demand uh, or, or supply that will drive the ticks. But now at this point, I think we are looking at a very consistent tick here. Uh, and uh, over here, now you can see again, the ticks, have, uh, the ticks have started moving up and we are at 9.52. We are at 9.52. RSI is telling us to be in this trade. So to keep uh, my risk low, I'm going to go to the 29.50, 29, uh, 29, uh, 50. All right, call, which is again three dollars eighty cents. Uh, and if I take a trade, it'll be on this. But let's take it. Let's watch the ticks for a minute, and then we'll see. Okay, ticks are still moving up. RSI is still persistent. But you know, they, that doesn't mean we should neglect any of the the, the chart action or the volume action. Okay, it, it, uh, we shouldn't neglect it. So, like for example, this bar very narrow bar with uh, low volume. So, and this one again, as you can see, there was some higher volume coming in on this bar. So this could be a topping out, uh, you know, temporarily at least, this could be a topping out formation here. So you do want to put the chart price action and uh, the uh, and the volume also into, into some kind of context. But of course, trading decisions are driven by these and both of them look pretty good even now. 
this does look like a topping out formation for me so you know to me at least um, and uh, so we could be temporarily seeing a top here because I mean it's gone up 32 points you know it's got to relax a little bit and uh, consolidate there so that it may be doing that um, if it has enough energy to push even higher it could but I think this bar here uh, is a big uh, big red bar uh, with some higher volume than the last three bars so uh, it tells me that there was some selling because it ended up towards the in the in the bottom half of the bar but you can never say you know there's there's some energy coming in there and this is also slightly higher volume and you can see the price action is going up so uh, it's looking pretty bullish all right let's get into another trade that that looked pretty bullish to me so let's go mid price 390 again let's do it okay my, I got a better price 350 that's not the, the 29.50 is uh, yeah 390 I'm going to take it as 390 sometimes paper money gives a little bit of a, uh, a slight advantage uh, sometimes it doesn't uh, uh, but uh, also in very volatile markets the market makers pricing themselves goes for a toss so you will you, those are times uh, uh, you will want to uh, you will want to take advantage of that uh, good question. Do you always take a uh, trade out of the money? Yes. Uh, go for about, a, uh, in, the, in the case of an SPX, uh, we go for about anywhere from 25 to 30 delta uh, because the SPX can move a lot. And as it approaches 50 delta, the extrinsic value of that option is maximized. And so that's when you want to take the trade off when it approaches the 50 delta mark. It may not approach the 50 delta mark. I'm just saying the ideal point would be a 50, 55 delta. At that point, its extrinsic value is maximized. So let's go take a look what about we have here. Uh, no, I'm going to look at my trade price as 390, not, not 350. So we're just marginally up here. But let's, what you want, what we want to watch is are the ticks coming down? Is the RSI coming down also? That's what you want to watch. As of now, it doesn't look like it in minutes. The question is what should be a healthy holding period for SPX? Besides SPX, anytime you're day trading, uh, if you're going into hours, that signal is no longer valid. So, uh, you know, you, if you're going into hours, you might as well adjust it and uh, do something with it because, uh, it, you know, the original trade premise is probably lost. Okay, it's probably lost. So now you can see the ticks coming down and price action coming down and uh, RSI also turning down slowly. So it's, it's not time to get out. But if you see a second red dot, then, you know, that, that, uh, that warrants some caution. Yeah, you can use it for the spy. You can use it for the spy. Okay, but but uh, but but don't use it for a stock. Is is what I meant. Yeah. Excuse. No, 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 no. It's not stupid questions, Rami. I, I, I'm just. Uh, I uh, you know when uh, uh, I I tend to be a little blunt when uh, when when something uh, can be a very big mistake. Uh, I just tend to be a little blunt. That's it. All right. So this one also turned green. Okay, at the end, uh, based on this price action. So uh, we are still good. We are in the trade. Uh, nothing has changed so far. Let's see, it might change. So the tick is changing to red, but the bar is not over yet. Eric, do you sell all the indicators package? Yeah, yeah, I do. Yeah. So we'll, we'll get into all of that. So as of now, we are still in the trade. It is showing a red tick at this point, but now the bar is over and it turned green. Okay. So now it's moving up again. So you're in the trade still. RSI is looking up. Ticks are looking up. Ticks have gone to 1,358 now. So that's a very, very strong breadth. And if you look at our day trading, now you'll see the very bullish right there. Okay. 90% uh, is very bullish. So the day trading signals also is confirming that you have uh, a very strong signal here. So let's see how our position is doing. Not a whole lot. We, we were in at 390. So it's only up about uh, 30 cents so far. Yeah, Christina, this can only use on SPX or you can use it on the SPY. Now, I, I'll show you the I'll show you the indicator settings and uh, uh, what what you'll see is here. Let me show it while we are just watching here. So, if you look at the tick SPX, uh, I have put it for the tick SP, and you can see that there are various ticks. You know, uh, dollar tick is the uh, New York Stock Exchange tick. Dollar tick slash Q is the Nasdaq. So if you if you wanted to trade the NDX or the QQQ, this is what you would you would choose. But in my opinion, I think the SPX is the strongest because it's got the top 500 stocks uh, you know, of the of the U.S. market. So 
the breadth of that uh, can be a very reliable indicator. Because the Dow Jones calculates it on 30 stocks, the NDX calculates, uh, calculates it on 100 stocks. Uh, the S&P is 500 stocks, uh, 500 largest corporations. So uh, things that are there in the NASDAQ, uh, in the NDX or the Dow Jones will also be in the SPX. So uh, I find that the SPX is probably the better or uh, the best option to trade. All right. So now we had one red tick here. Okay. We had one red tick here. Uh, let's see two red ticks here. Okay. Two red ticks coming in, but we're looking at a one minute chart. So let's see what our position is. Uh, we are actually just even okay the mark price is 3.9 uh, and uh, we got in at I'm, I'm going to say we got in at 3.9 so we are even on this trade so far let's see what happens RSI uh, showing slight weakness in its uh, but it's still in the bullish zone so uh, you know it's telling you to stay in the trade unless you see some persistent red ticks so in the case of a five minute uh, chart I said if you see two red ticks, you uh, you know it's time to take it off. But now we are looking at a one minute chart and so we got to give it a little bit more room. I would say three to four red ticks is when you would want to think of taking it off. RSI turning down based on price action but internals still holding up there. RSI turning down for sure. Okay, so RSI is clearly turning. So the price action is clearly bearish. Let's see what's up, what happens to the tick now. Even though it was a green tick, now you can see the red tick coming in. Okay, so this one was 12.38 and it's dropped down to 10.93. So that's a big drop. So at this point, you're, you're thinking, okay, should, you know, should I be getting out of this trade? But because this is a one minute chart, we have to give it a little bit more time. And you can also see the chart, uh, you know, the topping out pattern is very clear. No, RSI, question is, does the RSI always lead the tick? No, RSI has nothing to do with the tick. Uh, RSI is based on price action, whereas tick is based on market internals. Here you go. You're, you're seeing a red uh, arrow come in. It's time to take it off. Um, or you can do some hedging if you want. I would say um, uh, the uh, mid price is 350. Okay, so that's a loss of 200. That's okay. Uh, we may get a better price. It's moving up actually. All right. So I'm going to cancel the order. Let's just wait for this tick also. Got three seconds left. Let's see how this tick, uh, this bar ends. Yeah, it's still looking weak. Okay. So that bar ended at 1106. So that is lower. So it is time to take off the trade. Um, mid price is 350. I'm going to take it. We may get a better price. 355 is the mark. 350. Ticks are back up. So that's what I mean. So when we look at a one minute chart, um, when you look at a five minute chart, I'm saying you look for two bars. So, so ideally when you look for a, when you're doing a one minute chart, you might have to wait uh, more than five, you know, five or six bars uh, so that you're not shaken out of a trade that easily. I would still recommend trading based on the one minute chart, but at some point in the middle of the day, it would help to move this chart to a five minute chart. Right now, since the market has opened, uh, I think for the first one hour or so, it uh, it, it makes sense to stay with the uh, with the uh, with the one minute chart, and then we'll move on to the five minute chart after that. Question: Do you prefer to do the trading when the market opens so as to use the pent up uh, demand volatility? Yeah, yeah. In general, it's a it's a good idea for day trading. However, uh, there is also a lot of fake outs. Okay, so. Uh, it'll it'll be volatile. It'll suddenly take it down before it takes it up, or it'll suddenly take it up before it you know takes it down. So you do want to watch for that. But when there is a persistent um, futures activity, like uh, you know we saw, it was up 18 points. Uh, in that case, yeah, you know it 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 makes sense to uh, you know take a trade at the open. Now with stocks, it's a little bit more trickier because not every stock is going to react the same way like the futures. So you can see the tick value is, is 1228 right now. I'm looking at this number, this green number here, 1228, not bad, not bad. But we need to see the RSI also tick, uh, I mean, they start pointing upwards. Right now it's sort of flashed, uh, flat to slightly down. In this case, okay, question, do you always do in the closest expiry of the option chain? Yeah, because 
you don't want to take this these kind of trades overnight and so uh, you know the plan is you get out if, if the trade is not working against you you just get out you know take a small loss it's very good but because in this case because of the signals and the accuracy it lets you stray, uh, stay in a trade for long your winners are going to be much bigger than your losers so once again some softness coming in so 390 415 okay 25 cents you know fine i'll take it because we're just doing for for demonstration purposes uh, 410 so this is about 150 dollars uh, there you go you got 420 so once again it's just for demonstration you can see the rsi coming down and the uh, also some you know uh, just some topping out going on over here so unless it takes out this high now uh, there is uh, no reason to look on the bullish side because it's up 35 points already so uh, it needs to take out the the previous high of the day uh, in a convincing manner like this one did uh, this was the I, you know previously if you, if you remember I said this could be temporary uh, high point but this one uh, on much higher volume than the previous two it it took out that high so unless that happens here we, uh, uh, we don't want to get into a bullish trade especially given the RSI is uh, you know shaping downwards but you know it could be one of those days where the market just keeps on going higher and higher we, you know we never know so anyway so i'll pause it here let me put it put this on market watch so you can also see how the day trade signal column is correlating to uh, to the ticks here so i'll be watching i'm just going to put it on pause and uh, uh, you guys can you know feel free to take trades even from the day trading column all these are stocks are in very bullish mode here yes question can any uh, can you do it on put options yes of course you can do it uh, the um, you know uh, obviously uh, the, the market has to be a bearish day you know for, for you to do it in put options uh, right now today we're not going to look at put options because uh, you know uh, it, it's uh, uh, it's a very bullish day all right question before that if signal not clear do you use vertical turn it into a vertical uh, then butterfly you could do that Eric you know we are dealing with a very short ex expiry so you know in this case this thing expires tomorrow uh, if we go into tomorrow you might be trading tomorrow's expiry itself so trying all those fancy things I mean this is not the, you know this is not the forum to do that I mean you can do all those trades all those trades are great but you don't want to do it with uh, uh, using these signals or using uh, you know these uh, you know this kind of a trading system okay all right you can see that you know the ticks have dropped and this has come down over here now even though it might go below the 40 into the bearish zone you know do you really want to take a put trade no i mean look at the futures it's up 32 points if you if you, if you take a put trade today you're going completely against the grain and, and that trade can blow up any minute so and here you can see the market watch also the very bullish is reducing okay so I'll leave it here. You guys check it out and then I'll be back. Thanks. Yeah. So as you can see now, you know, it's, it, it's moved. It's clearly persistent in the red. And so, you know, at this point, you don't want to take a trade. You want to see how things go and uh, you want to see because you, you're, you're looking for bullish trades today. There's no question. It's up 32 points. And so uh, there's no way we're going to get into a put trade uh, today. You take a put trade or, and a call trade on the same day when, when you know, when there's, uh, when there's uncertainty in the market uh, and, you know, the, it's either mildly up or it's mildly down. That's when, uh, you know, that's when you take, uh, you, uh, you take uh, trades on both sides of the option uh, chain. But uh, today is not one of those days. Today we're going to take only call trades. And so uh, we'll be looking for call trades. So right now there is no call trade here. So we'll just, uh, you know, keep it on pause. Um, all right. How do I add the day trades uh, column? That's again uh, a proprietary uh, uh, a custom uh, you know indicator that I've created, uh, Jerry. So and uh, you know you can be part of the day trading service, and uh, that's a webinar every day. And basically, I'll, okay, while we are watching this thing, I'll tell you I'm I'm planning to integrate this uh, also uh, into the day trading uh, service. So uh, basically, when we uh, you know when we do the day trading webinars. We'll, uh, we'll look at this as well, the, the tick SPX uh, as well as the day trades column. So uh, we can take trades on you know, either one. Okay. One, how can we get the indicators? And yeah, I just mentioned that, uh, you know, if you join the day trading service, uh, you'll be able to see it on my screen. Now, if you want to get it on your computer, then I do sell these and you can send me an email and we'll talk about that. Okay. Yeah, sure. 
All right, I'm going to leave it here, guys. It's uh, you know, there's no trade right now, so we'll just uh, uh, leave it here. I'll be checking back in in uh, in uh, in some time, maybe half an hour or so. Thanks. Uh, hey, folks, I'm back. Uh, as you can see, um, the uh, you know the markets are just going flat right now, and so there is no trade. Even though some upticks seem to be coming, there is no trade. Uh, there's no real good trade, at least. But you know they'll come up as you go along. So I'm going to change this chart to a five-minute chart, and Let's watch how the five minutes are going. So you can see if you do the five minute chart, this is what it looks like. And uh, so you can see even the RSI, even though it re it's remaining in bullish, obviously, because some very strong price action here. But in terms of uh, there being a trade, I don't think so. Whereas if you change it back to the one minute, you'll see that the RSI is not in the very bullish anymore. So, you know, in some sense, um, doing the SPX intraday trading, it's better to be in... Uh, the uh, you know in the one minute chart for uh, for some more time and uh, you know uh, you know take it from there so now slight bullish uptick is coming here so you know you might want to think of a trade uh, but in general the way this entire day trading uh, signals work is i'm usually here uh, for the uh, you know for the first half an hour to one hour and we'll do a couple of live trades and so that's what you can expect so i'll be sending out an email with the recording for today and uh, you know i think all week we are going to do this so uh, uh, you know, uh, just a demonstration of this. And uh, so feel free to join in uh, from tomorrow also, Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. The next three days we'll be doing this uh, uh, with, uh, you know, with this uh, uh, SPX intraday tick signals uh, trading. Okay. All right. Thanks.